Self-driving taxis will soon hit the streets in San Francisco, offering paid trips 24 hours a day. California regulators approved permits for two autonomous car companies, Waymo and Cruise, last week, making it the first city in the nation to have two driverless <laughs> fleets in operation. The decision's a big win for driverless vehicle operators who spent tens of billions of dollars on the technology with very little return until now. But some city leaders, as well as residents, argue driverless cars will disrupt the economy, cause traffic jams, and interfere with emergency response scenes. Joining us now is Johanna Buyan. She is a senior tech reporter and editor for The Guardian. Johanna, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, let's talk about these driverless cars. They've been on the streets for years as Waymo and Cruz have tested their products. Why is there so much backlash now that the robo-taxis are charging for rides? Yeah, I mean, there have been a lot of concern over the course of the test period for both Waymo and Cruise. Um, they have only uh, been testing their vehicles in a small pilot, um, and they are expecting to expand it now. But in that time, when there's just a couple of cars on the road driving without a, a driver, um, uh, Firefighters, police, and several other city officials have said that these cars have uh, gotten in the way of several emergency situations. And so the root of the concern at this point is that the vehicles are not ready for prime time, as the SF police or a fire chief has said, because they still do not know how to operate in a city where there are emergencies, where there are pedestrians, where there are variables that just did not exist in a test area. So what have the two companies, uh, Waymo and Cruz, said about the fact that their vehicles don't pull over for ambulances, for example. Well, they've, you know, come up with sort of stopgap measures. They said that they've released um, various safety plans, um, but city officials are not satisfied. Just a day after the CPUC voted to expand the services, there was a line of cruise vehicles that were stuck in the North Beach neighborhood of San Francisco. Um, and while there wasn't an emergency situation happening at the time, the Board of Supervisor, um, Aaron Peskin, who is uh, the supervisor for North Beach, is really concerned that this could happen when there is an emergency situation. So several city officials are actually considering, you know, they've said every step um, in order to get the CPUC to reverse their vote, including possibly an injunction. And how about labor groups? You know, they're concerned that this is another example of AI replacing jobs, in this case, human taxi cab drivers. Has there been a response to that from the companies or from the regulators? Yes, I mean, there there were over 200 people who showed up to this vote um, last week, and several of them were rideshare drivers who were concerned that, yeah, their, their livelihoods are at stake. The response has largely been that this is not a, you know, zero-sum issue where, I mean, the driverless cars will be operating alongside human drivers for a very, very long time. Uh, but driver, rideshare drivers, professional drivers are not satisfied by that. They think that even if they continue to operate alongside these driverless cars. Um, they will eat into their demand. Many of the drivers said that this is how they support their family, and so this could really hurt them. Well, I mean, do we even know what the market is for people willing to get into a car that's driving itself? I mean, if I'm a, a driver for Uber right now, I wouldn't be terribly worried about this because, I mean, have you seen Would you these get cars? Into no. <laughs> I mean, I, I, have you the seen them in the action? Johanna, yourself, yeah. have you talked to anyone else who's pulled up alongside one and go, uh, how the heck is that thing moving if there's no driver? <laughs> I have seen them in action. I have been in a cruise. I, I've been in several different self-driving cars over the last few years, largely when they were in, still the, in the development phase. But in the last year, I've ridden in a cruise while it was completely driverless in San Francisco. Uh, I will say the ride itself was very smooth, um, but their c capabilities are still pretty limited. I, you know, I had to catch it between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. The car drove really, really slowly. Um, and I think more than being a, as a rider, um, there, there was sort of a uh, learning gap. Um, as a pedestrian, it's very difficult to figure out how to sort of navigate these because there's not a driver in the seat where you're communicating with them, where you can see that they've seen you and that you can cross safely. Um, so there's still a lot of you know, comfortability um, that the, the residents of San Francisco have to get to at this point. And just think of the terrain in San Francisco yeah. with those hills and being back there by yourself with no driver. That would make you, me You very know what nervous. I would miss? I would miss the driver asking me how my day's going. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> Joanna, uh, thank you. That was fascinating. And um, we'll have to check in on, on, on how popular these things actually are going forward. But we appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Hope you enjoyed the video. 
like, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for more.